Complexity requires even greater focus on simplicity. My friends, every day, 10 to 15 minutes, that is all we ask. Thank you for the new Patreon supporters. Thank you for the book buyers. Don't forget, as a Patreon supporter, you get every week 20 weekly vertical crossovers. We try to find five, 10 each way. Sometimes it's only five if it's a big down week, maybe up and 15 down. If it's a big up week, there may only be five down and 15 up, but we strive to provide you with 20 every single week we've been able to do so. They are great practice trading opportunities where you can practice to your heart's content. Remember, the weekly vertical crossover is the key to what we do here. It shows sea change in investor sentiment up or down in the market. Let's jump into the charts. Everything up for the day but Bitcoin. Bitcoin hammering it down. Not quite 5%, 4.79%, but look at where it's staying. Right there around that $36,600 mark or so. But that price percent oscillator still going down. Derivative oscillator still hammering down. Look at the two-day of course, this latest two-day candle, it's only halfway through. It is a red spinning top. Price percent oscillator still going down. Derivative oscillator losing some downward momentum. And of course, we can see on that half-day chart where, again, it keeps, you know, testing that bottom around that $36,000 mark. So maybe that's where Bitcoin's going to level out and start shooting up again, or it could just be resting before dropping even more. Regardless, we're not in a practice trade on Bitcoin right now. Why? Well, of course, shorting Bitcoin, we don't have any kind of derivatives market on it yet, probably because of the extreme volatility. Uh, but at some point, perhaps that will occur. That would probably help stabilize things a little more. But that will maybe happen at some point. I'm guessing it's probably a high probability of happening. But it isn't happening now. So we'll wait, see where Bitcoin bottoms when it starts to move up. We'll be watching it. If you're interested in trading Bitcoin, practice trading it, you're at the right place. We track it every day for you. Let's jump into the S&P 500. We see a green up candle, second week of up movement ending. Prior week's high was 421.25. This week's high, 422.92. So again, it is up a little bit more. That price percent oscillator, though, is still negative. We see that the, we see really a, a, a divergence there. Is it reaching a higher high? That price percent oscillator won't do it. The derivative oscillator also still losing momentum. Look at this two-day chart. It is still negative. First day of this latest two-day candle is up. And again, we have a down Price percent oscillator, derivative oscillator still barely negative. So we will keep a close watch to see what happens on Monday as this candle finishes drawing. Now we will go to the half day. We can see up in the morning, further up in the afternoon, as of course things are reaching a higher high. Or right, well, right up there at it. How high did it go back in? May. It reached a high of 422.82, 422.92, so a, a little bit higher. And uh, let's just check out that weekly. Yeah. So it is, it is continuing to move up in spite of the fact that that price percent oscillator is still negative. It shows you that divergence there between price movement and the indicators. What does that typically mean? means you have a very weak ceiling there. We'll continue to watch and see how it develops. Let's look at the Qs. NASDAQ uh, up for the day 1.70%. And on that weekly chart, we can see that as far as the high goes for the week, the high $336.06. Of course, we have seen higher highs in the NASDAQ. It is still negative on the price percent oscillator, derivative oscillator losing momentum two-day chart. It is trying to cross over going up. 
That, again, may give us an opportunity for a two-day recross going down. We saw that bounce off, and again, that may not last all that long. We'll see what happens on Monday as that candle finishes drawing. The derivative oscillator is gaining upward momentum, and that price percent oscillator, like we said, is trying to cross over. We can see big up movement in the morning, more up movement in the afternoon. Not enough energy, though, to cross over at the end of the day on the price percent oscillator, and the derivative oscillator is still negative. That is on the half-day chart. So we'll see how things shape up on Monday. That's how we ended the week. Let's look at bonds. Now, bonds also ended the week, well, ended the week for, for the day on Friday, up 1.37%. We do have a green spinning top, indecision tending up, price percent oscillator pulling away from the red signal line, derivative oscillator gaining some momentum at the end of the week. We look at the two-day, first day of this latest two-day candle, price percent oscillator heading up, derivative oscillator gaining momentum, green candle drawing, so again, we'll continue to watch and see how this develops as the two-day candle finishes drawing on Monday. Half-day chart, we can see where things had been heading down on Thursday and then popped up like everything else on Friday. But Bitcoin up in the morning, further up in the afternoon, crossing over going up on that half-day chart. And we will redraw that trend line. That's how easy it is with TC2000. If you don't have the charting platform we use, TC2000, my question is why not? It has virtually every indicator you could imagine easy to use. You have paper trading that is available. Also, of course, real trading is available right from the screen with their brokerage service. Urge you to check out TC2000. Follow the link in the show notes and you get $25 off if you subscribe. I've used it forever. When I found it, I got rid of something that was costing me like a hundred bucks a month or so. It was a boon and has been wonderful since then. Let's go to gold. Gold. Woo. Let's look at it first on the weekly. Again, continuing to move up. High for the week, 178.85. Prior week, 178.61. So we did hit a higher high. Things moving right up that trend line, derivative oscillator, gaining a little bit of momentum, price percent oscillator, losing a little bit, but still steaming up. Look at this two-day chart. We can see where things reached a high on Tuesday of this past week, red spinning top Wednesday, Thursday, and then on the two-day chart on Friday, we have a green spinning top um, yeah, I guess that's what we would call it. Slow down in that down movement. Price percent oscillator still positive, heading down some derivative oscillator is positive, but lost a lot of energy. We look at the half day chart, and you that all that loss of energy came on Thursday with a bump down in gold. And then gold trying to recover. Derivative oscillator negative, price percent oscillator negative on that half day chart. Things are still looking okay on the two day stronger on the weekly. So that's good to see. Folks, that's where we are as we end the day. Patreon supporters, I hope you did what I did at the end of the day on Friday. I was picking and choosing from the list of our weekly vertical crossovers on the S&P 500, entering practice trades for puts and calls on my options trading. Hope you were doing the same. That is what it is all about. Want to find out more about Patreon membership? Follow the link in the show notes. For as little as $30 a month, you get the options training. You get all of the weekly vertical crossovers we put out every week, plus that once a month live question and answer call in session where we, where we help you track your favorite stocks and ETFs for practice trading, answer your questions, keep you on track. God bless my friends. All the best from the whole team at Charting Wealth World Headquarters.